Dear Chairman, dear ladies and gentlemen, mitral regurgitation is a frequent comorbidity in heart failure patients with reduced ejection fraction, and more than one third of the patients suffer from moderate to severe mitral regurgitation. There are two main mechanisms of mitral regurgitation in heart failure patients. The first one is dilatation of the mitral annulus, which is due to left ventricular dilatation. And you heard about that before. With the dilated annulus, the actually structurally intact leaflets are pulled apart so they cannot close properly anymore. And uh, so that's why we talk of a functional mitral regurgitation. And this is type 1 in the Carpentier classification. The second main mechanism in heart failure patients is uh, type 3B in the Carpentier classification, which is also a functional mitral regurgitation, meaning that the <laughs> valves are structurally intact, but there is a tethering so they cannot reach the annular plane during systole, but they are tethered by the cordae, and this may happen in left ventricular dilatation, or for example, if you have a regional displacement of the papillary muscles in ischemic tissue or in scar tissue. Type 2 and type 3A in the Carpentier classification are the so-called degenerative diseases. That means the leaflets itself are damaged and we have either a, a prolapse or flail or we have a restricted movement in systole or diastole. Uh, this is degenerative and of course it can happen in heart failure but then heart failure is not the underlying cause. Mitral regurgitation in heart failure patients has a strong impact on prognosis and on morbidity. In this study here from uh, 1,200 patients with dilated cardiomyopathy, the survival free of hospitalization was 40% in patients without mitral regurgitation, and it dropped to 7% in patients with severe mitral regurgitation. So we need to do something for these patients with heart failure and mitral regurgitation. First of all, of course, one would think about repair of the valve or replacement, but this does hardly happen in this population. This is one a diagram from the EuroHeart survey, and it shows the patients that are accepted for operation depending on their ejection fraction. And on the right side, you see patients with the preserved ejection fraction above 60%, and two-thirds of these patients get operated. In clear contrast, pa patients with severely reduced ejection fraction get hardly operated, only 14% in this survey. So um, this is mainly due to the high surgical risk of these patients, and the sur surgical studies that have been performed also had not so good results. So it seems that the heart failure patient with severe mitral regurgitation is optionless, and this is where mitral clip therapy comes into play. I will give you a short overlook how the system works. I guess you uh, will know that on the left side, you see the mitral clip, which has two arms where the leaflets are positioned on and two grippers to grasp the leaflets and uh, to fix them. And on the right side, you see the quite complicated steering device, which allows you to uh, move the clip in every direction and to close the grippers and to close the arms. This is shown in these cartoons. The uh, whole system is advanced from the femoral vein, and then you make a transeptal puncture to get into the left atrium, and then you uh, advance the system into the left ventricle, and you try to place the, uh, uh, the anterior and posterior leaflet onto the arms of the mitral clip, and then the grippers are closed to catch both leaflets and the uh, whole clip can be closed to approximate the leaflets, and that finally results in an edge-to-edge -edge coaptation in the region where coaptation was insufficient before resulting in mitral regurgitation. And finally, you have not one orifice anymore, but you have a double orifice of the mitral valve. There is only one randomized trial on the mitral clip technique. It's the Everest 2 trial, and it included 279 patients with MR grade 3 or grade 4, and they were randomized in a 2 to 1 fashion to either mitral clip therapy or to surgery. So there was no medical control group. They were all, uh, all control patients were operated. 
the mean ejection fraction in this population was 60%, and 73% of the patients had degenerative disease. So when we're talking about the Everest-2 trial, we're not talking about a heart failure population. This was completely different. And also, all patients were amenable to surgery, of course, otherwise they could not have been randomized into the control group. The primary efficacy endpoint of this trial was a combination of freedom from death, freedom from surgery for mitral valve dysfunction, and freedom from high-grade mitral regurgitation. And this was more often met in the surgery group, so the surgical patients performed better. This was mainly driven by a huge uh, difference in surgery for mitral valve dysfunction. 20% of the mitral clip patients needed to get operated later on after the procedure, and only 2% in the surgery group needed second surgery. So that's what has uh, driven the difference in the primary efficacy endpoint. In contrast, major adverse events did occur significantly uh, fewer in the mitral clip group with 15 against 48%. This was mostly because not so many blood transfusions were necessary. Let's take a look at one uh, interesting subgroup analysis performed at 12 months. Patients aged above 70 years, patients with a functional instead of degenerative mitral regurgitation, and patients with a reduced ejection fraction did not show any differences in the primary efficacy endpoint between mitral clip and surgery. And this comes quite close to the heart failure population and might be one, maybe one hint that the heart failure patients may especially benefit from the mitral clip procedure. These are three-year follow-up data for the functional mitral regurgitation cohort. And you see at baseline, nearly all of the patients had grade three or grade four mitral regurgitation, and it dropped to grade one or grade two in most of these patients more than 80% after three years. I think this is a good result for the mitral clip. However, the surgical patients did a little better and 100% uh, had grade two or less mitral regurgitation after three years. As I told you, the Everest trial did not include the typical heart failure patient. And that's why I want to present you some of our experience from Hamburg and Cologne. We did more than 300 patients so far and in contrast to the Everest trial, most of our patients, uh, around two-thirds of the patients, had functional mitral regurgitation, and the mean ejection fraction in this population was 37%, so these were heart failure patients. All these patients could not be operated according to a heart team decision made by cardiologists and cardiac surgeons, and this is also a big difference compared to the Everest II trial. I would like to show you one example of a 38-year-old uh, uh, male. He was a New York Heart Association class four, had an ejection fraction of 25% and a high uh, grade of mitral regurgitation and you see here the certainly severe mitral regurgitation according to all criteria we heard of, and this was before the placement of the clip. And after clip implantation, this is the result. You see mitral regurgitation is only grade one anymore, so this was a very good result in this very severely ill and old patient. The procedural outcome in our uh, 300 patients, the success rate defined as reaching MR grade two or less uh, at discharge was about 90%. And interestingly, it was a little higher in the functional mitral regurgitation group with 92% compared to the degenerative mitral regurgitation group where only 83% had a successful um, mitral clip implantation. This was a st uh, statistically significant difference. At two years, the mitral regurgitation severity was significantly reduced. At baseline, we had grade three or grade four in all of these patients. And at discharge, as well as at all follow-up time points up to two years, approximately 90% of the patients had a mitral regurgitation 
grade one or grade two. Also, neocart association class significantly improved at baseline. Nearly all of the patients were in class three or in class four, and at all follow-up time points, we had approximately 60% of these patients that had uh, neocart association class one or class two. The six-minute walking distance also improved. We did only test that in a couple of patients, but at baseline, it was around 200 meters, and it increased at the follow-up time points to a little less than 300 meters, and this was a 43% increase, which was statistically significant. If we take a look at survival, interestingly, the degenerative and functional group had the same survival rate, which was surprising to me because the functional mitral regurgitation group was uh, significantly sicker. They had a, a higher Euroscore, but there was no difference in survival. <laughs> if we look at the patients that had the successful mitral clip implantation and compare them to mitral clip failure, there was also an interesting finding. The survival rate in the successfully treated patients after two years was 66% and it was only 31% in the failure patients. So this implies that there may be even a prognostic benefit of the therapy, but of course, this does not prove a causal link. It's not a randomized trial, and we urgently need a randomized trial to prove that. I would like to show you one other study. It's a retrospective analysis from five centers in Germany, including our center, and uh, it looked for end-stage heart failure patients and the mean ejection fraction was only 19%. It, was, uh, uh, it enrolled only 48 patients. All of them were uh, with mitral regurgitation grade 3 or grade 4 at baseline, and it discharge as well as after six months, it significantly dropped, and uh, more than 80% of the patients had MR grade 1 or grade 2 after six months. Also, neocard association class improved in these severely ill patients. At baseline, it was class 3 or class 4 in all of the patients. And at six months, more than 70% of the patients reached class 1 or class 2. This was one interesting finding from the study. A comparison in the survival between the group in neocard association class 3 and class 4. And as you can see, Class 3 patients, which is this line, more than 95% of the patients survived after 300 days. And in contrast, in the class 4 group, only 55% of the patients survived. So one might argue if this very severely ill patients with terminal heart failure and a dyspnea at rest really benefit from the procedure and if mitroclip really makes sense in this population. I would like to summarize. Mitral regurgitation in heart failure patients has a strong impact on the prognosis. Most of these patients do not get operated because of their high surgical risk. And mitral clip therapy may be one promising approach to help these patients. I hope I could convince you that at least symptoms can be alleviated. And, um, but on the other side, we do not have randomized trials that prove that so far. And uh, there are two ongoing randomized trials, which will hopefully show um, a good result, the reshape trial and COAP trial, and results are expected somewhere in uh, 2016 or 2019. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. There is a question from the wound. Yes. Uh, nice presentation. Thank you. I want to ask you about your study. Uh, don't you think that, uh, first of all, what was the reason not to operate the patients with degenerative mitral valve, knowing that their LV ejection fraction was so good? And the second question is, don't you think that the bad, so-called bad result of these patients belong to the, uh, or related to the mitral clip itself, not to, so that, that maybe it's a good reason to operate this patient, not to... Uh, to do mitral clip for this patient? Yeah, to your first question, uh, our population was uh, very old. They, in the mean, about 75 years, 
and uh, they had a high surgical risk. The Euroscore was above, uh, the logistic Euroscore was around 25%. And so uh, we talked about every case in our heart team with the cardiologist and the cardiac surgeon, and all these patients were refused from the surgeons. They said they could not be operated, and that's why we did the mitra clip in these patients. Okay. Uh, I would like to ask you a very small question. We as a surgeons, uh, never consider correction of the valve unless we are uh, addressing the annulus, which is not the case in the mitre clip. Can you can you uh, can you answer to this, please? Yes, this is certainly an important point, and I, I can just agree. I mean, we do not change the mitral an annulus, and uh, this is one weakness of the approach. There have been some percutaneous approaches also to address this issue. And uh, so far, they, they were not very successful, but there are some on the horizon. Uh, I think this will be important to further improve the results, also to correct the mitral annulus shape. Okay, thank you very much. We have a slide. Thank you very much.